Recording in progress. Please rise as you are able. I now call this meeting of City Council to order. Oh, Canada, our home and native land, true patriot love in all of us command. With glowing hearts, we see thee rise, the true strong and free from far and wide oh canada we stand on guard for thee god keep our land glorious and free Oh, Canada, we stand on guard for thee. Oh, Canada, we stand on guard for Sorry for the wait there, moving around a little bit more gingerly. The City of Barrie acknowledges the traditional territory of the Anishinaabeg people, which include the Odawa, Ojibwe, and Botawatomi nations, collectively known as the Three Fires Confederacy. We also acknowledge the Wendat Nation Huron, who occupied these lands prior to the middle of the 17th century. We're dedicated to honoring Indigenous history and culture and recognizing the enduring presence of Indigenous people, peoples on this land. We're committed to moving forward in the spirit of reconciliation and respect with all First Nations, Métis, and Inuit people. You may be seated. <clears throat> the comments from our outgoing student mayor have been uh, deferred until uh, the next general committee meeting. So we'll hear from Emma Miller at that point. But we do have a swearing in this evening. We have a student mayor, Gabrielle Gagnon, representing St. Monica's Catholic School. So I'll now ask Gabrielle to join Tara MacArthur, our deputy clerk of the podium, to be sworn in as the new student mayor. Please state your name. Gabriel Gagnon. Having been elected to the office of student mayor. Having been elected to the office of student mayor. For the period of March 27th to April 17th, 2024. For the period of March 27th to April 17th, 2024. Do solemnly promise and declare. Do solemnly promise and declare. That I will truly, faithfully, and impartially exercise this office. That I will truly, faithfully, and impartially exercise this office. To the best of my knowledge and ability. Mm -hmm. To the best of my knowledge and ability. That I have not received and will not receive. That I have not received and will not receive. Any payment or reward or promise thereof. Any payment or reward or promise thereof. For the exercise of this office. For the exercise of this office. In a bias, corrupt, or in any other improper manner. In a bias, corrupt, or in any other improper manner. That I will disclose any pecuniary interest. That I will disclose any pecuniary interest. Direct or indirect. Direct or indirect. In accordance with the Municipal Conflict of Interest Act. In accordance with the Municipal Conflict of Interest Act. That I will be faithful and bear true allegiance. That I will be faithful and bear true allegiance. To His Majesty King Charles III. To His Majesty King Charles III. And I make this some solemn promise and declaration. And I make this solemn promise and declaration. Conscientiously believing it to be true. Conscientiously believing it to be true. And knowing that it is of the same force and effect as if made under oath. And knowing that it is of the same force and effect as if made under oath. Congratulations.
your seat next to our mayor and uh, between and deputy mayor. Welcome to City Council, Gabriel, and uh, as you probably know, uh, both uh, my counsel, Councilor Nagusis and my kids go to school with you, so it's good to see such an incredible uh, young man coming from, from St. Saint, uh, Saint Monica's and uh, representing the school and the city going forward. Uh, Deputy Mayor Thompson will be uh, able to help you, and if he's not around, then uh, I know Councilor Corsa will jump in to help as well, as well as everyone around the table. But uh, first, we should introduce everyone. So I'm going to start uh, in Council Council uh, Ward 1, which is the ward for your school. Yes, Gabriel, uh, welcome to Council. My name is Claire Reepma. I'm the Councilor for Ward 1. And uh, uh, St. Monica is, is in Ward 1, so you're, you're home. Welcome, Gabriel. I'm Craig Nixon, Councilor for Ward 2. Hello, Gabriel. Welcome to the team. I'm Anne Marie Kungel, Councillor for Ward 3. Welcome aboard. Uh, my name is Amy Corser. I'm Councillor for Ward 4. Welcome. I am Deputy Mayor Thompson and also Ward 5 Councillor. Welcome, Gabriel. I know him since he was a little kid. And uh, I see your parents are very excited and happy. I'm so proud of you. You know, my name is Nuguse and uh, Ward 6 Councillor. Welcome, Gabriel. I'm uh, Gary Harvey, uh, Ward 7 Councillor. Congratulations, Gabriel. I'm Jim Harris, Councillor for Ward 8. So we have fun. Uh, welcome, Your Worship, uh, to City Council. Uh, my name is Sergio Gabriel Morales. Uh, I don't know how many knew that. Uh, I Councillor for Ward 9 in the South End, and I am, it's going to make me feel old, I am the a graduate of the class of the St. Monica's class of 2007. Long time ago. Welcome aboard. I'm Bern Hamilton. I'm the counselor for Ward 10. And I just want to say that swearing in is a mouthful. And your pronunciation and the reading of the oath was probably one of the best I've heard. So well done. It's, uh, it's certainly uh, nice to have you here, Gabriel. And uh, we'll get on to the business of the evening. But to echo Councillor Hamilton, I think um, every week the student mayors come in and they make us look bad because they, <laughs> they, they say what we were unable to. <laughs> Okay, uh, we'll move on at this point to the confirmation of the minutes. Uh, the first item on the agenda, so the minutes of the City Council meeting held on March the 6th have been circulated. Are there any corrections to the minutes? Seeing none, they're adopted as printed and circulated. We'll now go on to deputations. Uh, we have two deputations this evening. We have a deputation request from Kathy Kolbach, and we have one emergency deputation request from Karen Buck from the General Committee Report dated March 20th, 2024, regarding Motion 24G060, the proposed citywide amendment to permit four units on residentially zoned lands. For the deputation request received after the printing of the agenda, a vote in favor of the majority of council is required in order for the deputation to proceed. So all those in favor of the emergency deputation, and it carries, it's unanimous. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. So in accordance with the city's procedural bylaw, each deputation will be permitted a maximum of five minutes to speak. And I'll call upon Ms. Kolbach to come down to the podium. And after you start speaking, uh, you'll have five minutes as, uh, as just described. Hopefully I won't take five minutes, not even three. Uh, Mayor Nuttall and members of council, Firstly, I would like to take a moment to congratulate the city on the most recent announcements for both federal and provincial funding. 33 million will go a long way building homes and improving its infrastructure. Secondly, I would like to commend Councillor Ritma on his proposed amendments related to setbacks and height for ARUs specifically, and Councillor Harris for his comments on the fact we have been and continue to meet and exceed our targets. These amendments created great discussion around what had already been amended and approved by Council in 2021 with public engagement and as a result of our shared learning and lived experiences. The previous current year stats show us that there has been and continues to be an uptick in second and third suites. This has helped us to reach our provincial targets without adding a fourth unit. So we are on track. Do we actually need to add a fourth unit? Accessory dwelling units have proven to be too costly for builders 
As a result, do not create affordable units. Rents upwards of $3,000 monthly, given our current economic, economic environment, are not affordable. It only makes sense that building additional units within, within a home already built is going to cost less than starting from scratch. So restore, repurpose, and reuse. Not all of our housing solutions will come in the form of ARUs within our built boundary. We should also be addressing second and third units as of right outside of our built boundaries and into new subdivisions. New, uh, new subdivisions should have a good mix of types of units, not just single family homes, which a lot of them currently do, but rental apartments, duplexes, triplexes, and townhomes. Mixed use makes for healthy communities. In summary, if we must move forward with this citywide zoning amendment requiring four units to fulfill provincial policy, then I agree with the proposed amendments put forward by Councillor Ritma with an additional item to address and protect boundary trees. I'm on the trees again. Although referred to in staff comments, most homeowners do not know or understand the Ontario Forestry Act, nor do we educate them in this regard. And this is in relation to comments on page 17, item 11, which is uh, speaking about reducing tree cover. And uh, it speaks to boundary trees located in rear yards may be impacted by ARUs within an accessory building or structure. However, boundary trees remain considered under the Ontario Forestry Act. The Forestry Act has requirements for all property owners who share boundary trees, including penalties relating to injury or destruction. And having said that, nobody knows about the Ontario Forestry Act, so I'm wondering if there's something that we could do by way of amendment in this to help protect the boundary trees. And thank you for your time, and I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you for your deputation uh, this evening. Uh, just uh, quickly, Deputy Mayor Thompson has a question, but before that, I just want to um, just correct one thing, and I, I apologize saying this, but uh, isn't the provincial government that's requested the fours of right? It's actually the federal government right. that's requested the fours of right. right. Uh, Deputy Mayor, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, I took away your question. Okay, <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, well, thank you so much for your presentation, and uh, we will be dealing with this. We're going to take a quick break before we do, but we're going to deal with the second deputation, and then we'll be dealing with the matter that you've given your deputation on right after that, okay? Okay, thanks. Thank you so much. Uh, I'll now call upon Karen Buck to approach the podium for a deputation. Welcome to Council. And uh, you as well have five minutes for your deputation uh, once you uh, begin speaking. Mayor Nettle and Student Mayor Gabriel Gagnon and Councillors, good evening. I'm Karen Buck. I reside in Barry Ward 1. My home neighbourhood is located in the neighbor, in the in east of Johnson Road and south of Georgian Drive so that you sort of know where I am coming from. I am concerned that there is both an accessibility and affordability issue affecting Barry residents with regard to housing and I am in support of the proposed citywide amendment to permit new rental units. Now, I was very impressed with the deputation ahead of me, and uh, she has actually done her homework, whereas I have not because I haven't been involved in this issue for very long. So I would agree with her that on uh, res residentially zoned lands, there could be building approved, but only where it is deemed to be combat compatible, compatible with the existing neighborhoods. The proposed four unit housing solution should be available, um, and I put that in quotations depending on whether four is actually needed. Um, as one of the housing options to bury residents, especially if it is an option that increases both availability and affordability. And I would say affordability is very important. And so I would hope that the people who are involved with the city of Barrie are definitely using that as a very strong criteria. I am looking forward to developers in the city working on this housing option with the hope that it will increase both accessibility and affordability and that the design and location is compatible with existing neighborhoods. 
Thank you. Thank you for your deputation. Are there any questions for, I'm seeing none. So before we get to the uh, committee reports, I'm going to take a 10-minute uh, break till 7.35. Is that enough time, Madam Clerk? Uh, so at 7.35, we will reconvene to deal with uh, the committee reports uh, and then go into uh, the rest of the evening.
It is 7.35 and uh, we have all of uh, the items that we need to commence, so I'm going to call the meeting back to order. Uh, I want to apologize to folks at home. There were some things that um, uh, late in the day uh, that we've been working on that uh, didn't get in at an early enough time. So, Ms. Cook, thank you for making that happen and uh, working with us despite us missing our uh, timelines for preparation for tonight's meeting. Deputy Mayor Thompson, I believe you have the committee reports. Thank you, Mayor Nuttall. Mm -hmm. That's uh, moved by myself, second by Councillor Harvey, that Section A of the General Committee Report dated March 20, 2024, now circulated, be received. It's moved by Deputy Mayor Thompson, seconded by Councillor Harvey, that Section A of the General Committee Report dated March 20th, 2024, now circulated, be received. This is 24G051, report of the Affordability Committee dated February 27th, 2024, and 24G052, Report of the Infrastructure and Community Investment Committee, dated March 6, 2024. Are there any comments or questions in regards to the receiving of these two motions? Seeing none, all those in favour? And it carries. Deputy Mayor. Moved by myself, second by Councillor Harvey, that Section B of the General Committee Report, dated March 20, 2024, now circulated, be adopted. It's moved by Deputy Mayor Thompson, seconded by Councillor Harvey, the Section B of the General Committee Report, dated March 20th, 2024, now circulated be adopted. This is 24G053, the Nine Mile Portage Signage. 24G054, the Zoning Bylaw Amendment Application for 284-286 Dunlop Street West and 119 and 121 Henry Street. 24G055, Sherwood Court, no parking any time investigation. 24G056, acquisition of road widening for pedestrian connection and future improvements to 28 Bayfield Street. 24G057, waste management bylaw alignment with waste system changes. Are there any questions or comments with regards to the motions on the floor? Seeing none, all those in favor, and it carries. Deputy Mayor. Moved by myself, second by Councillor Harvey, that Section C of the General Committee Report dated March 20, 2024, now circulated be adopted. It's moved by Deputy Mayor Thompson, seconded by Councillor Harvey, that Section C of the General Committee Report dated March 20th, 2024, now circulated be adopted, 24G058, Amendment to the Terms of Reference of Funding for the Poet Laureate Program. Are there any questions or comments with regards to the motion on the floor? I'm going to hold that. If you have an amendment, you can move the amendment oh, right now. Okay. I do have an amendment. Um, my amendment is for paragraph 1A. Sorry, I have to put it on the floor. Uh, okay, sorry about that. Okay, moved by myself, Councillor Corser, and seconded by Councillor Kungel. That motion 24G058 of Section C of the General Committee Report dated March 20th, 2024, be amended by deleting paragraph 1A and replacing it with the following. That two members of council be added to the composition of the Poet Laureate Selection Committee as identified in the current Poet Laureate Terms of Reference. And I can speak to that. I need the motion, please. Oh, okay. sorry. It's okay, it's okay, it's okay. It's moved by Councillor Corser and seconded by Councillor Kunga that motion 24G058 of Section C of the General Committee Report dated March 20th, 2024 be amended by deleting paragraph 1A and replacing it with the following. 1A, that two members of council be added to the composition of the Poet Laureate Selection Committee as identified in the current Poet Laureate Terms of Reference. Madam Clerk, is this not the exact opposite of what was approved? What was approved was um, the current terms of reference would stand um, as they are now. Um, that was they were previously adop adopted by council, so the current um, terms of reference would still have the librarian um, and and whatnot. And we were just we were amending that last week to add the replace it with the three members of council because it's not adopted by council. The change actually hasn't taken place. Do you want, maybe I didn't explain that right now. And it, so if something's adopted at general committee and just for my, and we go the opposite direction at city council, 
thought we had to refer that back to general in order to deal with that. Um, three, Marinato, to you, Marinato. No, we don't have to go back to general committee. They, we can do amendments at council um, if you want to refer it back to general com committee for further discussion. Um, that's certainly an option as well. Okay. Council closures. Okay. All right, thank you. Um, I just wanted to speak to a very passionate conversation last week um, regarding the Poet Laureate and the committee in which to decide that position. I believe that we have a very passionate and involved council, and I think that's very obvious by all of our other committees that we always show up to around the table. It's usually a full house. Everyone usually has an open conversation. Um, and I believe that it, this proposal comes to that, the, 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 the um, motion was, or the, the new changes, was to allow for all of us to, uh, like not all of us, but for, for council to actually be actively involved in this process as well. And I felt that it wasn't, I wasn't comfortable with taking away our community partners and uh, the people that within the community that would uh, be sitting on a committee. I think that we should be inviting more people outside of council to be making, like, to be involved in some decisions. Um, so I thought that by changing the makeup of uh, the, what was previous to three members of council and then two other committee members, to change it to be more in line with our other advisory committees maybe, where we would have two added members of council because the actual money that is tied to the Poet L'Oreal pro program is in line with our, um, our other advisory committees, and uh, it seemed that it would be more welcoming to our community and welcoming the voices of our community to make these decisions. Thank you, Councillor, uh, for your comments. Are there any other questions or comments with regards uh, to the amendment on the Poet Laureate program? Councillor Dixon. Um, yeah, I have a quick one, and perhaps I should have brought it up last week, but I, I'm curious as to what kind of prompted this discussion in the first place, the change. I don't know, through you, Mayor who could answer, who could answer that? I think the, the, the origin of the change was a request that came in for more funding to uh, the, the position of Poet Laureate, uh, and... Uh, then there's, I think, an amendment um, on it. At, was it a committee, Deputy Mayor? I don't think I was here at that point. Um, but it went was passed to that committee and then brought to general. Any other questions or comments on the item? Seeing none, I'll call the vote on the amendment. All those in favor? Three. All those opposed? And it is the amendment has lost. Back to the main motion, are there any other amendments or questions or comments? Just a recorded vote. A recorded vote's been requested. Oh, Councilor Morales. Thank you, sorry, quick comment. Uh, thank you, Mayor Nettle. Uh, that board is not the same as the BIA, so I'll start with that, but I just wanna share a little anecdote. I hope that it works out. I'm aspirational with the amendment defeated. Um, I'm aspirational, here's why. In my short time at the BIA, uh, and Councillor Harris was there as well, one of the things we quickly learned is um, they reduced the, the council membership from two to one. And it wasn't something we did. It was the fact that through its growing pains that the BIA had, they realized that there is such a thing as too many board members. There was quorum issues, there was just synergies and that sweet spot for the BIA, I think they went from 10 and they asked for 11 and then they went all the way down to nine or eight. They didn't care so much about even number. And depending on the board, seven to nine is kind of the optimal thing. So I, I, I do uh, sympathize with the comments about uh, more voices the better, but to all the comments everybody said last week, I feel confident and um, again, I'm aspirational as to the impact this is gonna have. And just wanted to share that anecdote that both Councillor Harris and I went through. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, last call for any other comments or questions on the matter? Seeing none, it's a record of votes been requested, Madam Clerk. Um, thank you, Mayor Nettle. I'm gonna start with Councillor Ritma. Yes. Councillor Nixon? No. Councillor Kongo? No. Councillor Corser? No. Deputy Mayor Thompson? Yes. Councillor Nagusi? Yes. Councillor Harvey? Yes. Councillor Harris? Yes. 
Councillor Morales? Yes. And Councillor Hamilton? No. And Mayor Nuttall? Yes. The motion carries. Deputy Mayor. Moved by myself, second by Councillor Harvey, that Section D of the General Committee Report dated March 20, 2024, now circulated, be adopted. It's moved by Deputy Mayor Thompson, seconded by Councillor Harvey, that Section D of the General Committee Report dated March 20th, 2024, now circulated, be adopted. This is 24G059, the development of Disc Golf Plan. Are there any questions or comments on the Disc Golf Plan? Seeing none. All those in favor? And it carries. Deputy Mayor. Moved by myself, second by Councillor Harvey, that Section E of the General Committee Report dated March 20, 2024, now circulated, be adopted. It's moved by Deputy Mayor Thompson, seconded by Councillor Harvey, that Section E of the General Committee Report dated March 20th, 2024, now circulated, be adopted, 24G060, the proposed citywide amendment to permit four units on residentially zoned lands. Are there any questions or comments? I have an amendment, please. Yep. Councillor uh, Hamilton. It is moved by myself and seconded by Councillor Corsair that motion 24G060 of Section E of the General Committee Report dated March 20th, 2024, be amended by removing the words within the built boundary from the end of paragraph one. And I can speak to that. If you could pass the motion yes. first, please. It's moved by Councillor Hamilton, seconded by Councillor Corser, the motion 24G060, Section E of the General Committee Report, dated March 20th, 2024, be amended by removing the words within the built boundary from the end of paragraph one. Councillor Hamilton, the uh, floor is yours. Thank you, and, and through you, Mayor Nettle. Uh, I think there was great dialogue on this item last week, so I'm, I'm hoping not to rehash the dialogue and open up further debate. Uh, I think Councillor Ritma put together uh, a very good compromise in terms of his amendment uh, and what staff had suggested and also what currently exists um, for the three units as of right uh, in regards to uh, secondary structure setbacks. Um, so I was pleased to see that and pleased to see the, the consensus around the table on that. Uh, I also think it was a very plausible conversation to look at maybe approaching the annex lands differently uh, and really looking at how we can tap into these undeveloped lands and encourage maximum density in these areas. So again, was, it was agreed uh, with that intent. However, after Wednesday night and upon further follow-up conversations with staff, uh, it was recognized that by uh, the definition of annexed lands, does not actually include uh, areas that have been developed already. So by adding those four words with inbuilt boundary, you're actually still excluding hundreds of homes in the Salem and Hewitt's areas that have already been built, developed, established neighborhoods. Uh, actually, Ms. Banfield just gave me the number. It's about 2,000 homes that are already uh, in existence there. So these are existing neighborhoods. And I think by isolating them and creating different standards uh, for this subpopulation, subgeographic region, uh, it gets to what Councillor Corsair said next week, or last week, which I thought was, was very important. Uh, we don't want to create the perception of having different standards across the city or singling out you know, certain wards or subsets of wards unnecessarily. So this is really just to sort of clear up. I think I spoke to many of you, and most of us has assumed when we said within built boundary, it would actually include any developed area, uh, and in fact does not. Uh, it does not speak to those homes that are developed within these annex lands already. So this just goes to correct that uh, assumption that I think most of us made. I do still totally agree with the conversation about how do we look at the annex lands that are undeveloped, um, that haven't been tapped into yet, and how do we work with the development community in terms of maximizing the density in these areas. And I think this is a bigger conversation uh, beyond just setbacks in relation to secondary dwellings. I think there's lots of opportunities here to have further discussion about setbacks for primary dwellings to uh, encourage, you know, three plexes, four plexes, like we heard from the deputant earlier this morning uh, or earlier this evening. Uh, I think there's conversations about DCs on, on fourth units as well. So all of that is, is separate, I think, and I think we still deserve to have the conversation about how we approach the undeveloped annex lands. But this amendment specifically is just to clear up, I think, confusing language last week by adding the within build boundary. So the amendment's on the floor. Thank you, Councillor Hamilton. Any other questions or comments with regards to Deputy Mayor? 
Thank you, Mayor Nuttall. Um, I will be in support of this amendment. Um, so there's been a lot of back and forth and a lot of dialogue after Wednesday's meeting and, you know, and, and not minimizing it, but it's, it's a housekeeping as there was some um, liberty taken to the word of built boundary, not realizing that it did affect people who currently live in Barrie or have purchased under the pretense of a certain thing. But it, in no way was it to um, segregate of other people because if we look at history and uh, it's always the actual standards have changed you know in our home building like so you look at some of our older neighborhoods you know and I spoke with Councilor Rima today that the standard small lot would have been 50 by 120 would have been in a 1960 subdivision and then it got into the 40s and stuff and now in the annex lines, we're building in 35. So th there's standards evolve, you know, and things move. So it was never about the segregation of, you know, current residents to, it was more looking at incentivizing, utilizing, and, and making it equitable throughout the city, where there are a few of our counselor and our colleagues that are going to feel the brunt of this. And we were trying as a collective group to, uh, you know, spread it around. And uh, as one of the deputies said, that mixed use or, or mixed built forms makes great communities. So I will be in support of this. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Any other questions or comments on the matter? I'm going to go with, with Councillor Morales and then Councillor Harris. Thank you, Mayor Nuttall. I had a bit to say, but Deputy Mayor Thompson said it better uh, and nailed it on the head. And I have spoken up for the last meeting. So I just I just wanted to give the compliment uh, where credit's due on this for uh, Councillor Hamilton. Um, a lot of people feel this way, that's fine, but I, I really respect her passion. Um, again, uh, we want to create consistent policy. And uh, a lot of people who may not traverse through those roads that are still being cleaned up and the sod maybe hasn't gone in, uh, some of these annex lands are, have already had to sub subdivision and the sod's going in this weekend or in two weeks. So for them, it would be a little bit of a unfairness, inconsistency, whatever word um, you want to use. So I, I, I definitely uh, uh, um, support Councillor Hamilton at least flagging that concept. Uh, obviously, I still have my struggle with this uh, from another perspective, but I've already said that. But I do want to emphasize uh, because she uh, definitely uh, brought this home into the table. So I appreciate that. Thank you, Councillor Morales. And now, Councillor Harris. Yeah, thank you, Mayor Nuttall. And uh, it was an interesting discussion last time I was uh, I was uh, virtual, so I. but it was a great discussion to be listening to and to be a small part of. I just wanted to – I support the motion. I think it's a, it's a good uh, – uh, amendment to clean up the within the belt boundary. But just wanted to have a quick little comment on, on equity um, or equality. Um, equity might be that everybody had the opportunity, despite the size of their yard, to have a detached secondary dwelling. So I think, but I'm not going down that road. I'm just saying that. So if you change the size of the lot over time, then equity would be, you know, changing the parameters to allow you to have one. So I think of the, the example of equity when you see the people at a, at a sporting event and, there's, and people are standing on um, uh, little uh, stools to keep themselves at the same eye level. You wouldn't give the six five person the same stool as you gave the five five person. So anyway, just an example of kind of as we think about equity, it, we may have um, may, other way to think about that. So thank you. Thank you, Councilor Harris. Any other questions or comments? Seeing none, all those in favor? And it carries. Are there any other questions or comments or amendments? Uh, Deputy Mayor Thompson. Thank you, Mayor Nuttall. Moved by myself, seconded by Councillor Harvey, that motion 24G60 of Section E of the General Committee Report dated March 20, 2024, be amended by adding the, follow paragraph, the following to paragraph 1, that the original setbacks as presented in Table 5.9.9.2 in Staff Report DV011-2, 24 continue to apply to the approved proposed and future draft plans of subdivisions in the Salem and Hewitt secondary plan areas where built building permits have not been issued for construction and I can speak to that after you it's moved by Deputy Mayor Thompson seconded by Council Harvey that motion 24 G 060 of section E of the general committee report dated March 20th 2024 be amended by adding the following paragraph uh, sorry the following two paragraph Number one, that the original setbacks as presented in Table 5.2.9.2 in Staff Report DEV 011-24 continue to apply to 
approve proposed and future draft plans subdivision in the Salem Hewitt's secondary plans uh, plan areas where building permits have not been issued for their construction. Deputy Mayor Thompson. Thank you, Mayor Nunn. Um, you know, like I said, I'm going to keep it very brief. We just had the conversation about the people who already live here, people who have bought under certain pretense, and this is not affecting them. So I think this is a way to kind of look at some in incentives to areas as Councillor Hamilton, who represents the area, has said, there's we need to tap into some of the unbuilt uh, locations and lands there. So, any other comments or questions with regards to the amendment? Uh, yes, uh, Councillor Rutman. Yes, I'm I'm uh, in support of this. I think what it does is it solves the problem that Councillor uh, Hamilton had, um, and it gives us still the opportunity to uh, reduce the setback. So I I think it's a good uh, good way to go. Any other comments or questions on the matter? Seeing none, all those in favor? It carries. Are there any other amendments or statements or questions on the main motion? Uh, yes, uh, Councillor Harvey. Thank you, Mayor Nuttle. Uh, I've got another amendment uh, moved by myself, seconded by Councillor Nagusi. That motion 24-G-060, Section E of the General Committee Report, dated March 20th, 2024, be amended by adding the following paragraph. That staff investigate opportunities for non-condominized, -condom that's a big word, fourplexes for the purpose of sale in approved, proposed, and future draft plans of subdivision in the Salem and Hewitt Secondary Plan areas where building permits have not been issued for their construction and report back to Affordability Committee. It's moved by Councillor Harvey, seconded by Councillor Nagusi. The motion 24G060, Section E of the General Committee Report, dated March 20th, 2024, be amended by adding the following paragraph, that staff investigate opportunities for non condominiumized fourplexes for the purpose of sale and approve proposed and future draft plans of subdivision in the Salem and Hewitt secondary plan areas where building permits have not been issued for the construction and report back to Affordability Committee. Are there any questions or comments? Uh, Councillor. Yeah, thank you, Mayor Nuttall. Um, I think this is just one more tool that just in the past week uh, has become part of our dialogue behind the scenes and uh, obviously trying to think of different tools in the toolbox and thinking a little bit outside of the box as to some ways that we can make housing a little more affordable. And especially when you look at a lot of, a lot of what we're seeing is condos being built. Well, on top of your mortgage, now you're also potentially dealing with anywhere between a four to almost a thousand dollar a month condo fee attached to that too. So this, uh, this affords a uh, potential opportunity um, for fourplexes to be constructed without having a condo attached to it uh, like we're seeing in the odd townhouse complex but even our, most of the townhouses are all condo based and uh, it, it, it really does pose an extra hurdle to uh, especially people just getting into the market where they're struggling to pay the mortgage, let alone think about the fact that they've got a condo payment on top of it. And I actually know of one person, for instance, that didn't even factor in the condo piece into it. And all of a sudden they're like, ooh, how am I going to make up that extra over 500 bucks a month? So um, that's where I think this is a good idea it's for staff to investigate and report back. And uh, it definitely does sound like something that is... Uh, is doable from the information that we've been provided uh, thus far and uh, I'll be quite honest with you I got to put kudos out to you too because I think uh, it should be recognized that uh, a lot of the heavy lifting uh, with this has been done by uh, yourself and your uh, staff in your office yeah thank you council Harvey and thank you Renato I think and credit to you. you have been saying this when the conversation started around doing both uh, increasing housing through rental stock and also home ownership. So, and, and I, not to re-adjudicate the three and, and four units uh, per, per dwelling or per lot, pardon me, but the one challenge with that approach, although it adds housing, it also makes properties more expensive. And I think, you know, in, in my research, trying to find out evidence on, on that particular uh, method for adding housing stock, the, the, the truth is it does make housing more, more uh, cost effective more costly and I think having this balanced approach where we're trying to also find ways to make housing more affordable is the way forward so I certainly appreciate this effort and I think it makes perfect sense and and um, look forward to seeing what we can do to actually make housing more affordable so thank you 
And Councillor Hamilton. Thank you, and through you, I, I just also want to reiterate, I think this is a great collective effort since last Wednesday and really di diving into this, so I appreciate this motion in particular. I think this is exactly what the half funding from the federal government is intended and purpose to do, right? So uh, four plexes, maximizing density, and creating more affordable options. So bang on, thank you for putting this forward and absolutely supportive of this. Uh, Councillor Corser. I'm um, just having a quick conversation. Uh, uh, the so getting more clarity on this, I, I want to actually just say that this. A lot of people thought think that cooperative housing is rental only, but if I'm understanding this correctly, this is pretty much another form of cooperative housing, because you have four units that are purchased separately, and there's an agreement between the people who have the units for um, care of. Is is this? I think that the, the is, reason we're asking staff to investigate is, is kind of threefold. One, uh, what's legal, what's not. Okay. Two, uh, what fits for the city of Barrie. And three, uh, in t I mean in terms of the physical, but three, what fits for the Barrie in terms of the uh, city of Barrie for the structure. So you're, you're mm. right. It could end up being between the owners. Mm. It also could be built into the purchase and sale agreements. So. This person is responsible for that, that person is responsible for that, and the deal isn't between the owners, it's between the, the purchaser and uh, the, the home builder. So, you know, I, I, I don't, the answer is I don't know, but, <laughs> but staff investigating may come back and say, we can't do this. Yeah. And in fact, uh, and I was under the impression, like Councillor Hamilton just said, that this was part of, would fall right under the federal, um, I guess, criteria. It doesn't necessarily fit weirdly. So, uh, you know, it's like other duties is assigned. Let's hope it fits there. Uh, but, but we don't know, and we'll get that back. Then I absolutely would support this because this would fall under some of my uh, – the information coming back would be very interesting to take a look at other opportunities in that space. Any other questions or comments? Uh, just before we vote on this, uh, yeah, I've done a lot of work on this. So have a lot of other people. Uh, and uh, the beauty of, of this is we get to butt heads, and I hate butting heads in, in, in these <laughs> meetings. And I, love, I love when we can try to figure out something that works for all parts of the city. Uh, and so, you know, this is another potential option. It's not a silver bullet to deal with the housing crisis. It's just maybe one more thing that could happen, or maybe not. Uh, but the w consistent thing we've heard from the federal and provincial governments about the city of Barrie is that their headspace is in the right place. And I think this falls right in line with that. Uh, it, it may not mean this works, but we're trying new and different and innovative things that no one else is to try to meet the day. So uh, thank you, Councillor Harvey, and thank you for all council for the work that you've been doing on these items this week. All in uh, favor of the amendment. And that carries, uh, do I have any other Amendments or statements or questions? Uh, Councillor Morales. Thank you, uh, Mayor Nettle. Uh, moved by myself, seconded by Councillor Harvey. That motion 24-G-060 of Section E of the General Committee Report dated March 20th, 2024, be amended by adding the following paragraph. That staff investigate the removal of development charges on fourth units in the Salem and Hewitt secondary plan areas for approved, proposed, and future draft plans of subdivision where building permits have not been issued for their construction and report back to affordability committee. And as I'm passing this down, members of council would have got an electronic copy with a section I didn't read that was crossed out just because of a duplication error. Uh, the motion 24G060 of section E of the general committee report dated March 20th, 2024 be amended by adding the following paragraph after I say it was moved by Council Morales and seconded by Council Harvey that staff investigate the removal of development charges on the fourth units in the Salem and Hewitt secondary plan areas, uh, plan areas for approved, proposed, and future draft plans of subdivision where building permits have not been issued for the construction and report back to affordability committee. Uh, Councillor, the floor is yours, and then I have a question for you after that. Thank you. Mayor Nuttall, uh, one of the things I always remember about this housing crisis that's been going on for a while, but the discussion this recent term is when you said at a past meeting publicly here, you said your first house cost like 280, 60 something. That the reason, 
Yeah, there you go. The reason I'm bringing that up specifically is, uh, A, kudos to you for saying that. And it's uh, Mayor Cam, Cam Guthrie today on online made a post. And uh, his post was essentially saying to the citizens of Guelph, uh, I know I talk a lot about housing. I know I push back. I'm hoping I took a screenshot of it quickly so I can tell everybody. But I know I do those things. And some people are pushing back. And here's the reason. And a picture speaks a, a million words. Uh, Mayor Nuttall, I know we're buried, but this is so closely related. Um, what he essentially said was in 1999, Rachel and I were 20 and 23 years old and just married. 1999. I had a salary of $21,700 a year, and Rachel was working part-time at eight bucks an hour at a retail store in the mall. I sold my drum set, and we know he loves his drums, my baseball card collection, and more, and we somehow scraped together just under $10,000 as a required down payment on this house, which looks just like an East End house or War II house equivalent in Barrie, that we bought for $125,000 and $500. Yes, we qualified for a mortgage. Today, our kids are 21 and 20 years old. As things currently sit, they will never have the same opportunity as we did. And not just for home ownership, even rental is unaffordable. So he says, when you see me consistently being passionate about housing issues and advocacy for reforms, and to make things easier for more supply and choices in housing types, yes, I'm doing it for everyone, but I'm doing it especially for them and their generation. And he has a picture of the listing, looks very 1999 font of the house and the prices. Not trying to be dramatic. Yes, we're Barry Knock Wealth. That goes a long way. You said it like a year early. This is what we're dealing with. And if this is another tool in that tool shed, we're just getting staff to investigate on the DCs, uh, then so be it. And specifically the language for, uh, about it being in uh, new subdivisions, et cetera, et cetera. I think there's a good opportunity. Let's see if our market responds. And um, actually, uh, other municipalities do waive, I can think of at least one that waived the fourth. Uh, the, the, U, the DC on the fourth unit. So this is an unprecedented as well. So thank you. Thank you, uh, Councilor Morales. Just if uh, Council will give me the, the ability to ask questions. So um, the one thing I think that's, that's missing from this, and uh, this is because I was late on providing any feedback, so this is on me, is uh, subject to uh, the approval of uh, the Minister of Municipal Affairs of the Province of Ontario, uh, which is required. Is it possible for an amendment to come to your amendment to add that phrase in? Yes, I believe it has to be in writing. Uh, if it's acceptable to the clerk, if you want to write it on that paper now, initial it. I don't know if that's sufficient. Um, the quickest way to do it would be just to withdraw the amendment, reintroduce it with that written on it, and then perfect. we can go from there. Perfect. So I will withdraw it. Speak really slowly as Mayor Nettle writes, but I won't talk. Usually I make fun of everyone else's chicken scratch, and now you get to make one of mine. <laughs> I'll pick my battles. Uh, thank you, Mayor Nuttall. Uh, moved by myself, seconded by Councillor Harvey, that motion 24-G-060 of Section E of the General Committee Report, dated March 2024, be amended by adding the following paragraph. That staff investigate the removal of development charges on fourth units in the Salem and Hewitt secondary areas for approved, proposed, and future draft plans of subdivision where building permits have not been issued for the construction report back to affordability committee comma subject to the approval of the minister of municipal affairs and housing for the province of ontario i've seen that acronym enough to know what it means no not the camp story i don't want people to cry again um <laughs> okay it's moved by councillor morales seconded by councillor harvey that motion 24 g060 of section e of the general committee report dated march 20th 2024 be amended by adding the following paragraph that staff investigate the removal of development charges on fourth units in the salem hewitt secondary plan areas for approved proposed and future drafts draft plans of subdivision where building permits have not been issued for the construction report back to general committee and this be subject to the approval of the minister of the municipal affairs and housing for the province of ontario and that is on the floor are there any other comments or questions just a very quick comment um 
I don't want to tell that story again. I don't want to tell any of those stories. We need to do our part. The province needs to do their part. The feds need to do their part. I can't believe that we're like 15 years behind in building. I can't believe policy changed in the 80s, 90s. And yeah, enough of those stories. Let's, let's change the narrative. And also, if there is a second round uh, for the Federal Housing Accelerator Fund, uh, to our staff, this might be another little nice addendum. It's like, look, we didn't just stop doing things after we got the money. And so let's get more money for the residents of Barrie if there's second funding. I am all for more money. Um, any other questions or comments on? Yep, Councillor Harf. Yeah, thanks, Mayor Nettle. Uh, obviously, I support it because I did second it. But um, I, I think another thing that got identified uh, through conversations with our development community uh, this week too was uh, how um, these fourth units don't become economical because of the DCs that are involved with them, and if we can use some of this accelerator funding to assist in that to help promote some of these accessory dwellings, um, we're all that much further ahead in trying to create some more affordable type of built form. Um, so for that, I, I hope that we're able to do this. Um, but obviously there's a, a whole host of other uh, issues that are attached to it too, especially because as a municipality we have to remain whole and things like that. So, uh, And that's where we have our CFO that comes into that, that uh, to uh, see how we can uh, pull this off. <laughs> Deputy he's, he's Mayor gone. shaking his head yeah. no. <laughs> the CFO is not making eye contact yeah, with anyone yeah. right now. <laughs> yeah. We're taking money out of the uh, thank you, Councillor Harvey. Any other comments or questions around the Councillor Kungle? Thank you. And while I've been watching <laughs> Mr. Miller for any non strong nonverbals on this, um, <laughs> mentioning DCs feels a little triggering at this point in time. Um, so I guess I would just say, you know, I've, I've got questions that this raises, and I'm not sure if that will come back in the staff investigation, but, and maybe I'm looking at it too simply and it's a quick conversation, but. Um, when we talk about, you know, the intention of fourth units being more economical, this is couched into a very particular area. So what's to say if there's a sale of property, houses come down, there's a redevelopment that fits the same scope, how are we going to see DCs in this? So what impact could this have while we're being very specific to a particular part of Barrie if development does change into a different area and we've just created uh, a benefit financially? It's uh, certainly uh, an option for this to be applicable across the city. Uh, that's not consistent with the feedback I've had from members of council around the city. Um, not just on this item, I mean on the whole conversation of fourth units, etc. So I'll, I'll leave that with you. It, it, and Council Council, sorry, because I, I moved the amendment and I've been bringing this to the table for a couple of months. Um, that's why the wording is specific to Salem. That was purposeful. So Sorry, do I still have the floor? No, will you address the question to my amendment, so I'm going to answer it. Uh, through you, Mayor Nuttall. I, well, I did not. Well, you're questioning my amendment on that. Fair enough. So clarification through you, Mayor Nuttall. Thank you. So I'd look to staff, is it Mr. Miller, if that would be part of the scope, just for clear for when we're putting a motion like this on the floor, um, and it is specifically bound to a certain geographic area, should a development happen within the built boundary that aligns to this, is there cause for someone to claim that they should have rights to a DC being waived? So just looking at understanding what are the pros and cons here around how this could be applied outside of where it's being directed if you have the same type of Point of order, Bill that's design. not part of the motion. That's not part of the amendment. That's very clear. So, so, sorry, to clarify my point of order, my amendment is very specific in nature and scope, so the question in hand is not to the amendment. If she wants to speak to, to the main motion, then so be it, but my amendment is very specific. I think, I think if, I, if I understand the question correctly, it's if past specific, if the fourth unit DC waiver is passed specifically for uh, the Salem and Hewitt's Creek secondary plans is are we opening up the opportunity for others inside the boundary to sue to gain that same access is that am I right yeah, yeah uh, what's the risk or up what's the risk or impact of this as a consequence so I think it's actually applicable to the motion because the motion is putting something on on the floor if it may result in an amendment on your motion, and so I'm going to 
pass it off to Mr. Miller or maybe Mr. Prowse, and maybe the answer is you'll come back and let us know as part of any sort of staff engagement. Uh, through you, um, Mayor Nettles. So we will we will report back, but remember the Development Charges Act is extremely prescribed, um, and we'll report back that you you have some options. You can open your bylaw. You can provide this exemption. You can make it area specific within your bylaw. Um, but the DC Act, as written now, is um, this is not a mandated um, uh, discount that the province is giving. So in the end you have to fund it. So you have to keep the development charges whole. So if you're going to give a discount in a particular area, which you can do, okay. you have to also identify a funding source unless the Development Charges Act legislation were to change. Thank you, Mr. Miller. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And I'm just a little confused. Um, I took it that this amendment deleted the words Salem and Hewitt secondary plan. And in that case, if I read it correctly, then. Um, no, it doesn't. It says staff investigate the removal of development charges on fourth units in the Salem and Hewitt secondary plan areas for approved, proposed, and future draft plans of subdivision. Oh, okay. All right. That's fine. Then I enter. Councillor Hamilton. Thank you, and through you, I, I definitely support uh, the amendment as proposed here, and I think Councillor Kungle actually raised a really excellent question uh, in terms of what's the risk for it, but I personally agree to limiting to these undeveloped lands in the annexed areas for, for a number of reasons. Uh, I think, one, this is a great way to work with developers and encourage developers to look at approaching net new neighbourhoods differently than we have in the past. I think this incentivizes them in a way where we haven't done before to maximise density, but it does so in a very balanced way that we're not impacting the mature neighborhoods and existing sort of feel that residents have right now that we all love about the city. So I think this, I think we're putting forward a really, really balanced approach where we're pushing it as far as we can within the current built boundary areas without pushing it so far that we're really going to lose the look and feel of our city of why people live here. So we have a tremendous opportunity with these untapped lands to not negatively impact existing residences. So I'm hopeful that we can move forward with this specific area, uh, but I, I do agree it's going to be important for us to look at the risk uh, and make sure we mitigate that going forward. But I will support this as it is. Uh, Councillor Morales. Yeah, very quickly, Mayor Nettle. Actually, I'm very thankful for your uh, uh, addendum. Uh, your, your last one, because subject to ministry approval, really nicely ties in that that that, that language from our treasurer um, that it's you got to follow the rules. Maybe they might change the rules and make an exemption for Barry. Maybe they might change the rules and in, 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 overall in the province, or maybe they say, "Good job, you got to fund it yourself." But guess what? You're gonna probably be eligible for one of our funds. So, so there's probably three options and more that I'm missing. So that. I think that really puts a nice bow on the end uh, with your comments, and let's get the information back and, and go from there. Thank you. Any other uh, comments or questions? Yeah, I, I, uh, I've been told about 100 times by our CFO and by our CAO uh, that if you touch development charges, then the existing taxpayer is going to pay for it. So if you want to uh, take money from your uh, residents and give it to developers, that's the way to do it. Um, that's why which none of us want to do, I assume. That's why uh, we need to have uh, the language in place that it's subject to approval from the province of Ontario. Uh, that's what protects our residents. If the Minister for Municipal Affairs and Housing signs off on a request that, uh, that would allow this fourth unit piece to happen, uh, then we can proceed. If he doesn't or they don't, as there was other options just I, I think communicated on how this could happen, uh, then I don't see this happening because I, I certainly wouldn't support, and I don't think anyone on this table would support us taking money from the tax base and, and supplementing uh, uh, supplementing this going forward. I will uh, be, be very transparent with members of council. This conversation is already happening with, uh, with the minister. Uh, it's been happening uh, on a number, of, uh, a number of fronts because uh, if we are going to be aggressive, on getting housing built, uh, it's actually the laws of the province that are um, perhaps holding us back in some places. And so 
uh, doesn't mean we'll adopt it. It doesn't mean that we'll run with it. But if we don't get the information, we'll certainly never do it. Uh, so uh, thank you to, I think everybody's come together on this, and thank you to uh, Councillor Morales for, uh, for the motion as well and uh, for all the hard work on this. So I will call the vote. All those in favor? And it carries. Now on the main motion as amended, Councillor Kungal, I had you down. Thanks, just a comment leading from, I think, a conversation um, that was more broader based, just around um, four units as a right on certain properties. And getting more into, I think, at some point in time, uh, finding a table for us to have conversations and whether that's a direction now, maybe not, but I think soon, um, to staff, uh, maybe at a committee level, about what's the impact then when we talk about certain types of density on certain parcels of land. And one example I brought up was current bylaws, the number of dogs. And actually, I was mistaken. It's not two, it's three. Mm -hmm. um, so if you have four families, four units on a parcel, you have a potential, legally, of up to 12 dogs. So that's not an anti-pro um, conversation about that bylaw, but I think that's one example of what is the impact of some of the things that we are facilitating to the benefit of housing and, and seeing development and, and getting um, housing to market, um, but when we talk about your neighborhoods and healthy living and uh, that dynamic. And so I'm assuming that's one of probably several that we might need to think about a way in which to identify the complexities of what are the um, positive and negative consequences of some of these pieces specific to fourth unit? Yeah, absolutely. You raised this last week as well. Yeah. Uh, so I think staff can take that uh, away. Perhaps you can go uh, and, and work with them if it's an item for discussion that's required. I would guess that would be uh, with Ms. Banfield and um, our clerk. And the two of them and yourself can uh, try to come up with, with something to come back. Uh, because it is, but there's no question, right? There's just, there's just no question. So, uh, and it may not be restrictions. It may be we need to have more X for the amount of houses that are going forward. So, and if I may, just in response to that, kind of open it up because I'll only know what I know. But whether that's by law or, or other individuals kind of identifying, oh, have you thought about this consideration? I think it's an opportunity now for us to kind of gather that intelligence and then talk a bit about how to we look at that in a fair way. Yeah, absolutely. I, again, I, I would encourage that through a you know, side conversation and item coming. Okay. Any other comments, uh, Councillor Corser? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, I guess this is a comment as well, and over the broader conversation, I'm not sure if this is a place that... Um, uh, but I'm going to throw it out there anyway. The conversations that uh, talking to, uh, this, talking to uh, Councillor Hamilton about the language that we use of built boundary and annex lands when people, as uh, Councillor Hamilton has pointed out, people have lived on annex land for quite some time, where we talk about having an inclusive city and the language that we use when we talk about different areas of the city um, I don't know if this is technical language that is considered through you, Mayor, I guess, to Ms. Ms. Banfield. Through you, Mayor Nuttall, to Councillor Corser, there are actually are very technical terms. So built boundary is actually um, a provincial term, and the other the other piece would be greenfield area. So that some, so they actually are very technical terms. They have in our official plan some different provisions and policies. So. Um, while the language might be different, we don't call them, the, typically we don't call them the annex lands anymore, but there are technical terms of the built boundary and the greenfield area. Okay, further that, if I may. Um, uh, so this, with the, the green lands and the built boundary, so the built boundary is a certain um, um, geographical area around a certain piece of the city, but there's built areas outside that, that's just what we call the area traditionally as in city planning or layout. I'm not sure how we get to a, a, a description of built boundary. Through you, Mayor Nuttall, to Council Corser, again, it's defined by the province, and it's really, as I said, the easiest way to think about it in the city of Barrie's context is uh, the built boundary. Um, another reference is sometimes you hear the former, the, the former boundary of the city of Barrie, and then the greenfield um, areas are the lands that were annexed from 
uh, the town of Innisfil, but again, they're, they're technical provincial terms about greenfield development and um, built boundary development. And, and the policies have always been about actually splitting development in municipalities like the city of Barrie, splitting the development 50-50. So 50% of the population growth should be intensification and infill, and 50% of growth should be in a greenfield area. Mm -hmm. That's trying to balance it out. And, um, and certainly, we're really fortunate at the city of Barrie and have interest in development um, in both areas. Okay, thank you. I just uh, um, I just wanted to make it clear that, and I'm sure every councillor around the table would agree with me that they're all part of the city of Barrie, uh, residents within our city. And the conversation that happened last week and this week has kind of highlighted a little bit of um, the language, although technical, um, it may not be the most inclusive or the most um, welcoming. So I just wanted to put that out there that uh, that I uh, the language, does, it, the technical language is certainly isn't, I'm sure, the feel around this table when it comes to our residents. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Corser. Any other comments on the main motion? Uh, thank you, Renato. Uh, you might have to give me a little bit of leeway on this, but I am speaking to this whole discussion. Um, so I said most of my comments in the uh, for the amendments, but I really quickly, and it's topical to this, I really want to give an apology to Councillor Conkle. Here's why. Because I, I was reflecting the last four minutes here. I told Councillor Harris I'm probably not going to speak, and I'm like, i, I got to go back on it. I am going to speak. Um, I think it speaks to the, the housing crisis, the fact that I got triggered in that situation. And the apology to Councillor Conkle is, after her clarification, which I talked over, your clarification, the treasurer's clarification, which was, no, this one is fair game because if you do it a little bit differently, there's a legal implication which now makes it related to the discussion, meaning your point of order is at rule. If it was another issue, I don't know, maybe that would have been different. But on this one, because of the complexities of the policies and because of, and that is literally the definition of getting triggered by it, I got triggered by it. And why? It's because we're in such a housing crisis that I literally had an emotional trigger response to this. It's because people my age and your age, Mayor Nuttall, who did everything right, who got all the education, they're never going to be able to afford to buy if we keep going down this path. And they're struggling to even rent. So, um, uh, yeah, so I guess it's, it's an apology related to the motion as amended. Uh, and I think this goes back to your comment from a year ago and Kim Guthrie's uh, uh, post that this is a very human aspect and there's lots at stake. And uh, Councilor Kungle, I'll make direct eye contact with you. I want to apologize on that. Not a text, not a conversation, uh, explicitly there. And there's a human aspect to this. So sorry, Councilor Harris, I did end up speaking. Thank you, Councilor. I think uh, Councilor Kungle's receiving that. Yeah. <laughs> It was rejected because there was no apology needed. <laughs> okay, it's yours anyways. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Uh, any other questions or comments on the main motion? Deputy Mayor Thompson. Thank you, Mayor Nuttall. I'll be very brief. Um, when this was first introduced, it, it started as three of a right to four of a right. And, you know, there's federal money. And I think understanding the pressures we're under in a municipality, I think tonight's meeting shows collaboratively working together we can get to somewhere where we're all comfortable representing the people we represent in in a fair way um where people are nervous but i just it's it's taken a lot of work um a lot of back and forth a lot of working on um compromise and it's been a great collaborative effort to get here where a lot of people are nervous about this and uh but i think you know we're trying and we understand the uh the importance of this. So, thank you. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Uh, Councillor Harris? And maybe quickly, because I, and I thank you, uh, Councillor Reitman. I know we've been in conversation because often, you know, the uh, attached dwellings have been something that we've really dealt with in a significant way and had a lot of uh, challenges. And we're able to come forward with, that with the amendments last term to uh, change the parameters and, and really uh, reduce the challenges associated with them. And I, and I and I wanted to share, because a resident of, of uh, uh, Ward 8 who had come and, and did deputation when we talked about the four units at the very beginning, said to me, and, and full credit, um, you know, if the four units were to go, could you please keep the same uh, uh, setbacks and, and uh, heights that you had just um, um, passed to, to, to better manage them? So 
really appreciate that perspective from residents who's really reasonable and fair and understanding here we are in this housing crisis um, and you know let's be reasonable so I think I think you, you framed it really well um, Councillor Hamilton as far as trying to really maintain the character of our, our existing neighborhoods and what makes very special but also use the opportunity for new areas and have uh, you know what could those areas do as far as adding to housing stock um, so I, I think we've come to a good place, and I appreciate that we've really tried to do this balance. Ideally, would I like to see a slower approach that we could see evidence and see how, what is the impact of things like how many dogs you have to now manage with four units or three units? But I don't think where we are, we're afforded to be taking that much time, even though we're ahead on our targets, which was um, which we appreciate the effort we've done as a, as a community. But we do have to act, and we're acting, I think, prudently as the best we can with the information that we have in front of us. So uh, I think uh, I really appreciate um, you know, where we've landed with the multitude of, of amendments that have really uh, created some really interesting opportunities. And we have some investigation to find out if some of these things can happen. But I think we're going down the right path. So thank you, Marinato. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? All right. Uh, thank you, Council, because uh, this is not comfortable. Uh, it is not easy. Uh, it's probably not comfortable for anywhere in the city, um, but there are certain wards where there's a high number of larger lots uh, that are mature neighborhoods um, that folks were very concerned about. And uh, I think that, as, as Councillor Hamilton said, as Councillor Harris just said, this is a very balanced approach we've come up with uh, this evening. I, I think that, um, you know, I, I don't want to get too far ahead of myself, but I believe that the, the federal government will be uh, happy with the overall approach. Um, and yes, there are other uh, funding opportunities coming up. I'm not sure that we'd be seen as a candidate uh, in the uh, successive uh, requests. But we're certainly putting ourselves into a position to be able to be. Um, the thing I think that's most unique about the conversation we've had, when I was a councillor, and I was probably not just uh, someone who saw this, but it was somebody who maybe uh, the CAO <laughs> probably agree that I may have encouraged it, uh, there would be a very developer on one side, resident on the other, and you know, council feeling stuck in between. And I think through all of the conversations, like Councillor Hamilton uh, flagging the, the, like we were leaving some of our own residents outside of the intended purpose of our motion, right? Like we were leaving our own people on the outside. We had uh, a number of amendments last week, this week, that I think puts the residents and the development community and the city all on the same side. It's very unusual. It's very, very, very unusual. So I hope that is maintained. Uh, I hope that we have good corporate citizens in our development community. I believe we do. And I'm really happy to see that, you know, essentially the deputations here this evening were um, mostly, if not all, positive, um, which is a rare thing when we're making changes to development policies and to housing and, and setbacks, et cetera. So thank you for everyone for the work you've done. Uh, and I'll call the vote. Record a vote, please. Record a vote's been requested by Deputy Mayor Thompson. Um, thank you, Mayor Nuttall. I'm gonna start with Councillor Rima. Yes. Councillor Nixon. Yes. Councillor Kungle. Yes. Councillor Corser. Yes. Deputy Mayor Thompson. Yes. Councillor Nagusi. Yes. Councillor Harvey? Yes. Councillor Harris? Yes. Councillor Morales? Yes. Councillor Hamilton? Yes. And Mayor Nuttall? Yes. Motion carries. Uh, here's the uh, motion is amended. <laughs> amended. Amended. <laughs> I thought we were going to amend it so much. It was five to one. <laughs> Uh, Section F, Deputy Mayor, Section F.
Thank you, Mayor Nuth. Moved by myself, second by Councilor Harvey, that Section F, the General Committee report dated March 20, 2024, now circulated, be adopted. It's moved by Deputy Mayor Thompson, seconded by Councilor Harvey, that Section F of the General, General Committee report dated March 20th, uh, 2024, now circulated, be adopted. This is 24G061, Delegation of Authority for Signing Artwork, Loan Agreements, and Artist Agreements for Temporary Works. Any questions or comments with regards to the motion? Seeing none, all those in favor? It carries. Deputy Mayor Thompson. Moved by myself, second by Councillor Harvey, that Section G of the General Committee report dated March 20, 2024, now circulated, be adopted. It's moved by Deputy Mayor Thompson, seconded by Councillor Harvey, the Section G of the General Committee Report, dated March 20th, 2024, now circulated to be adopted. This is 24G062, correspondence from the circulation, uh, circulation list of March 20th, regarding a request of the province to extend the removal date of listed properties from municipal heritage registers. And 24G063, the correspondence from circulation list for March 20th, from the Town of Aurora concerning the usage of school board facilities available to local municipalities. Any questions or comments with regards to the motions? Seeing none, all those in favor? It carries. Deputy Mayor Thompson, 11.2. Moved by myself, second by Councillor Harvey, that Section A of the General Committee report dated March 27, 2024, now circulated, be received. It's moved by Deputy Mayor Thompson, seconded by Councillor Harvey, the Section A of the General Committee Report, dated March 27, 2024, now circulated to be received. This is 24G064, confidential instructions to be applied to negotiations related to a potential acquisition of property matter, personal information matters about identifiable individuals, and legal advice city capital projects. Are there any questions or comments with regards to the motion? Seeing none, all those in favour? It carries. Deputy Mayor Thompson. Moved by myself, second by Councillor Harvey, that Section B of the General Committee Report dated March 27, 2024, now circulated, be adopted. It's moved by Deputy Mayor Thompson, seconded by Councillor Harvey, that Section B of the General Committee Report dated March 27, 2024, now circulated, be adopted. 24G065, confidential instructions to be applied to negotiations related to a potential acquisition of property matter, personal information matters about identifiable individuals and legal advice for city capital projects. Any questions or comments with regards to the motion on the floor? Seeing none, all those in favor? And it carries. Councillor Harvey. Thank you, Mayor Nuttall. Uh, motion without notice. Uh, moved by myself, seconded by Councillor Nixon. Motion without notice. 2024 uh, Barry Air Show event that pursuant to Section 7.1 of the Procedural Bylaw 2019-100, Permission be granted to introduce a motion without notice concerning the 2024 Barry Air Show event. It's moved by Councillor Harvey, seconded by Councillor Nixon, for a motion without notice 2024 Barry Air Show event that pursuant to Section 7.1 of the Procedural Bylaw 2019 100. Permission be granted to introduce a motion without notice concerning 2024 Barry Air Show event. Two thirds majority is required. There's no debate on the matter. All those in favour? It carries. Councillor Harvey. Moved by myself, seconded by Councillor Nixon. 2024 Barry Air Show event. One, that the City of Barry accept the opportunity from CFB Borden to deliver a 2024 Barry Air Show event on Barry's waterfront and that staff and recreation and culture and economic and creative development departments work in partnership with CFB Borden, County of Simcoe, and the Lake Simcoe Regional Airport and other community stakeholders to deliver the event. And two, that an additional $150,000 be allocated to the 2024 operating budget for a total budget of $180,000 to deliver a 2024 Barry Air Show with up to $110,000 being funded from the Tourism Reserve and the remaining $70,000 to be raised through sponsorship. It's moved by Councillor Harvey, seconded by Councillor Nixon, that the 
City of Barrie accept the opportunity from CFB Borden to deliver 2024 Barrie Air Show event on Barrie's waterfront and that staff and rec and culture and economic and creative development departments work in partnership with CFB Borden, County of Simcoe and the Lake Simcoe Regional Airport and other stakeholders to deliver the event. Then additional $150,000 be allocated to the 2024 operating budget for a total of $180,000 to deliver 2024 Barry Air Show, with up to $110,000 being funded from the Tourism Reserve and the remaining $70,000 to be raised through uh, sponsorship. That motion's on the floor. Councillor, would you like to speak to it? Yeah, just briefly. It's uh, pretty uh, self-explanatory, and I think... Any of us that have been to the air show, especially over the last few years, um, have seen the success that it uh, has had and the uh, thousands of people that it draws to uh, not only our waterfront but into our downtown. Um, it would be interesting to know how many are from out of town that potentially are then also staying at area hotels and things of that sort. Um, but it, especially uh, during the anniversary one, it was really impressive with the volume of people that came out and uh, it's uh, it's definitely shown that it's worth having on an annualized basis if if uh, the Air Force is available to do it um, and obviously the more people that we can draw into our downtown and and all the economic spin-offs in relation to that uh, and obviously this kind of ties into my position on the tourism board also thank you councillor any other comments or oh, sorry deputy mayor Thank you. Through you, Mayor Nuttall. Um, first of all, I want to recognize um, Ms. Slickler. Uh, just the work from last year um, with her team from the dinner and everything. And, and I remember being there with Mayor Nuttall. We were there when they, they started the show. And uh, it, it had to be, and I don't want to sell it short, but well over 60,000 people. It was spread all the way around the bay, both sides. And it was incredible. And I remember saying to Mayor Nuttall, it's too bad we can't do this here every year. This year being the anniversary of 100 years, it was, I thought, wow, would it be ever great. So uh, the work that uh, Councillor Harvey's put in this, but I also know that Mayor Nuttall has uh, been very passionate about this. And I'd be remiss not to mention our honorary colonel, uh, Mr. Hayes, in the audience and somebody who was a big part to this and getting certain things to Barry for our dinner. So I think this is great. And like I said about the tree lighting, you know, our open air done up, anything we can do to drive the public downtown to show them the great stuff that's going there is great for this city. So I will be in total support for this. So thank you. Any other comments or questions from members of council? Thank you, uh, uh, Councillor Supreme Ford, Councillor Nixon, obviously is a ward councillor. Uh, it's going to be great for the BIA, great for the downtown. Uh, I, I want to want to highlight a few things on this. There's so much happening the next 12 months uh, with relation to uh, recognizing uh, those who served our veterans, uh, the uh, different uh, battles that shaped the world. Quite frankly, uh, 80th anniversary uh, of D-Day coming up, 100th anniversary of the Royal Canadian Air Force. Uh, we've now got the air show coming here. I believe there's going to be some other announcements on some pretty incredible uh, relationship pieces between Base Borden and Barrie, as well as the Grand Simcoe Foresters in the city of Barrie. Uh, there's just so much to um, both celebrate and, and, and stand back and say thank you for uh, in, in this space. And I think that this air show will help do that. And so... Uh, the opportunity and the gracious uh, way in which Base Borden has uh, included the city of Barrie in this uh, is incredible to see. And while I, I love Base Borden, uh, Ms. Schlichter, I hope that uh, this stays here every year. Um, there's no doubt going to be some complaints because of some really, really loud engines flying by. Uh, but the uh, benefit to the city and the education for our young people uh, in a time where to have served in, in World War II, for instance, uh, one would need to be 98 years of age or older. I think it's, uh, it's an incredible benefit to the young people of our city to be able to experience this air show and see some of the history live. So uh, I really do hope, Council, I know that everyone's in favor, but I really do hope, Council, uh, not just for this year, 
that we can really build something around this uh, for the city of Barrie going forward. There will be families from everywhere uh, coming to check this out. And it's just another way of us putting the city of Barrie on the map. Uh, so I will call the vote, all of those in favor. And it carries. And I believe, Councillor Nixon, that you're moving from seconder to mover. Seconder to mover. I'm just moving right along here as, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, it's a sure sign that spring is coming because the, the BIA is uh, talking about patios and, and so am I. I would like to make a direct motion uh, based on the time frame involved. Uh, direct motion being that uh, business licensing bylaw or move. Sorry. Oh, I am sorry. I'm so excited about the patios. Um, <laughs> are they open now? <laughs> Um, moved by myself, seconded by Councillor Reitma. Uh Motion without notice. Uh, 2024 patio programming. Uh, that pursuant to section 7.1 of the procedural bylaw 2019-100, permission be granted to introduce a direct motion without notice concerning the 2024 patio programming. <clears throat> It's moved by Councillor Nixon and seconded by Councillor Ritma. A motion without notice, 2024 patio programming, that pursuant to section 7.1 of the procedural bylaw 2019-100, permission be granted to introduce a motion without notice concerning the 2024 patio programming. A two-thirds majority is required and no debate is allowable at this point. So all those in favor, it carries. <laughs> Over to you, uh, Councillor Nixon. Okay. Again, moved by myself, seconded by Councillor Reitma. Um, that business licensing bylaw 2006-266 as amended be further amended that the downtown BIA patio program season be defined as the second Friday of April through uh, to November 15th in alignment with the city winter control and spring cleanup maintenance schedules. It's moved by Councillor Nixon and seconded by Councillor Ritma that 2024 patio programming, the business licensing bylaw 2006-266 is amended, be further amended that the downtown BIA patio program season be defined as the second Friday of April through to, uh, I'm sorry, the second Friday of April to November, oh, okay, I see that now, uh, to November 15th in alignment with the city winter control and spring cleanup maintenance schedules. Are there any questions or comments with regards to the motion? And Councillor, would you like the floor? Yeah, certainly. Thank you. Um, yeah, well, basically what they're asking for is just more to define it so that it's a uh, set period uh, every year. In this case, this year, I think it only makes a couple of days difference. Uh, they just want to make sure that they are uh, able to put them out uh, come Friday as opposed to a particular date. There might be a Sunday. They'd obviously rather have them out on a Friday. And with the uh, warmer... Weather coming, hopefully uh, uh, second Friday of April is a nice warm day and uh, hope to see you down there. Yeah. <laughs> Councillor, if the winter and the snow comes back, it's because you jinxed it tonight. I just want to point that out. Uh, any other comments or questions? Mm -hmm. Seeing none, all those in favour? And it carries. We're now on to uh, inquiries as there's no presentations or any members of Council have inquiries. Deputy Mayor Thompson. Thank you, Mayor Nuttall. Um, most council might have seen uh, the report um, in regards to our speed cameras. Um, getting abused over here. <laughs> I was just through you to staff, and I think it would be Miss Banfield. Um, when the art, when you see the report, it looks like it's become a cash grab. And uh, I, I just wanted to maybe have staff the opportunity, you know, t to explain, you know, for people who are watching and stuff, that there is a, a cost to it. And the intentions of them were to change behavior. And, and when we voted in favor of these, I remember, I think it was Councillor Jim Harris, said that the greatest goal would be that this would cost the city money because that it would change the behaviors, you know, and that would mean that people had slowed down. 
and we had invested in the cameras and not needed them. And I just think the the report looked um, like it was, you know, a cash grab that it was 100 percent profit. And, uh, you know, I, I believe this council's strategic priority was the safety of our, our kids getting to and from school and trying to change the behaviors that drive in. So if you could just kind of explain some of the, the costs associated um, to the corporation. Through you, Mayor Nuttall, to the deputy mayor. So ultimately, um, the, the program is very complex. And I mean, even initially, $300,000 of an investment uh, was approved by that the, the then council in 2022. So there is uh, absolutely an investment in, in many, many things to operate the program, uh, not only staff, um, security, the security around the, um, the actual processing center, obviously computers and technology and software, the cameras themselves. Um, there's a lot of things that um, absolutely go into uh, the running of the program. So uh, the intention never ever has been that it's a cash grab. It 100% has council at the, at the time and, and continues to be very laser focused on community safety zones. Um, you know, it is a pilot program. Council has been nimble. You, you, you took back the ability to change the, the time of day around school zones to make it simpler for people to know when the 40 kilometers an hour is, is uh, relevant. Um, um, and this is our very preliminary data to, to share with you. So, um, you know, and also we started with the two highest areas in terms of speed. Um, and so I'm not even necessarily sure it's too early to say if that's um, going to be consistent um, infractions and consistent um, revenue, I guess, if you want to call it that, um, because it really, we did start with two um, areas that not only have high volumes, but had um, high, uh, the, the worst kind of speed rates. So um, as we run the program a little bit more, change the locations, report back to council. You know, there'll be more fulsome data. Um, but, but as I said, rest assured, there are costs associated with, with running the program. Uh, and again, it comes back to, we really do want to see the behaviors changed. I think some of that early data showed um, that there has been, um, certainly when the cameras are operating, but even a little bit beyond that. So um, it's still a bit early to, to kind of have all that um, data, but I know that uh, we wanted to get something in front of council because we know that it was um, certainly a hot topic. I hope that helps. Uh, very much, and just to, just to follow up to that, um, correct me if I'm wrong. We said that any profit at the end after costs and associated that would be reinvested into more of the community safety program. Correct. Through you, Mayor Nuttall, to the Deputy Mayor. Absolutely, that was always, again, the, the intention that if there was additional revenues, that it would be uh, put right back into community safety measures. So that could mean additional cameras, it could mean permanent speed bumps, it could be all sorts of things. Um, but absolutely, that's the direction um, from Council, is to, uh, to reinvest that money in um, things that will make our community safer. Perfect, thank you so much. Councillor Hamilton. Thank you, and through you, I just have a, a follow-up question based on what um, Deputy Mayor Thompson said. Again, thank you for the report. I think it's really helpful to see the data at this time. Uh, I was really encouraged to see the effectiveness, you know, speeds being reduced by 12 kilometers and 13 kilometers uh, an hour in the two areas, considering prior speeds were 74 in a 40, 69 in a 40. Um, so I think it really does speak to the intent of promoting safety. That being said, I also was pleasantly surprised to see this reduction. Uh, I know there were some concerns that when the speed cameras are in use, that the flashing beacon lights uh, had to be disengaged as per provincial legislation. And we heard from a lot of residents uh, in that respect. Uh, so happy to see that actually the speed cameras were effective without the flashing lights, great. I do still wonder if they would be uh, even more effective if you had both the cameras and the flashing lights. And I remember we had a conversation around this table that perhaps we would provide feedback to the provincial government to sort of identify that this is a bit of a concern uh, and perhaps take a, a look at that legislation. But I don't think we ever gave any direction. I think it was just a conversation we had. So I, I did ask staff if there was any direction, if there had been any conversations with the provincial government, and there was none. So I just want to maybe verify Confirm. I believe there was actually a, a I penned a letter that included both that and the flashing arms, arms on buses, and that was sent to the Minister of Transportation. 
Excellent. Okay. So it's been done. Perfect. We haven't heard anything yeah. back, I'm assuming, I, at this point. What? I was with him yesterday, and I totally forgot. Okay. So I will follow Reminder, up. maybe we could follow up yeah. and, and see, because I think as we continue to use these cameras, it would be great. Again, if the intent really is to change behavior and promote road safety, um, then this is another thing we really want to keep on. Yeah, I'll send a message tonight and see, find out where we're at. Any other uh, inquiries? Councillor Corsa. Just on the same topic, um, I'm scrambling looking for the report, and unfortunately right now it escapes me. But I just was really taken aback. I knew that we had actually a speeding problem on Ann Street and, and other areas, but the numbers of the first month was really staggering to me about how many people. <laughs> I don't know if any of us at the table, but I was like, what was the number? So for December, was it? It was uh, 16, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Ms. Banfield, uh, it was 16,348 people were speeding that were, that were recorded speeding within that area between 7 a.m. and 5 p.m. in a school zone. Am I reading that correctly? Through you, Mayor Nuttall, uh, to Councillor Courser. So on page three, you're yeah. talking about Ann Street. So it talks about the number of violations recorded, recorded um, January, February, March, and that total is 35,674. In three months, and this isn't the amount of people ticketed, there was um, 4,677. I'm sorry, I'm just talking about the information for, for Ann Street. Um, there was, so if this was truly, as, as um, Deputy Mayor pointed out, if this was a cash grab, I'm sure we would have tried a little harder to get tickets on all those people, but um, obviously not. Um, it's not a cash grab. But for 35,674 people were recorded in that time period, in a three-month period, speeding in a school zone between 7 a.m. and 5 p.m., I think that's a real wake-up call for some of the speeds on our streets. And, of course, the other area was, um, uh, the other area, Big Bay Point, was even worse. It was 58,258 people recorded speeding at 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. Again, not the amount of tickets that were given out. There was only 4,563 tickets, but those numbers are incredibly staggering that these are school zones and safety, like community safety zones. And I just really wanted to highlight that for, I'm, I, I'm glad that we have these cameras and I hope that they are more effective as we go around the city. I see that the numbers were dropping as as the longer the cameras were there for. Um, I think it's an excellent program, and I'm really looking forward to uh, expanding it. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Um, I'll ask everyone to stick to inquiries, please. Uh, any other inquiries? Seeing none, we're going to go to announcements, Deputy Mayor. No announcements. Councilor Nixon, we're going to shake it up this week. <laughs> I'd like to announce the patio changes. Can we <laughs> talk about that? Uh, actually, Monday, April 8th, 2024, uh, we, are having, yes, on the, we are having a Ward 2 town hall meeting on the patio. Um, <laughs> the expectation. Mayor Nuttall and I will be there uh, Monday, April 8th from 6.30 to 8. Uh, we're having it uh, this time around at Traditions Banquet Hall, which is at the Sheba Shrine, 142 John Street. We uh, we're going to cover a lot of topics, but the main ones will be we'll be talking about changes in curbside collection starting May first. We are going to have an update from uh, Barry Police Services on some more two statistics, and we are also going to have uh, staff from uh, Parking Services who will be on site to assist with Barry residents wanting to get their waterfront parking passes uh, set up. So, hopefully, uh, we have a lot of people there, and uh, we're looking forward to it. So, thank you. Thank you, Councillor. And uh, Councillor Kungle. Thank you, because I know we're not meeting next week with the holiday, so I wanted to make sure people knew um, a couple of pieces. And I don't know if you're speaking to the cleanup, spring cleanup, you, spring into I, clean. I, it's in, you do it. It's okay. in here, but go ahead. Um, So I wanted to um, do a quick shout out. So we have the Spring into Clean program that has been relaunched. 
And um, we have, um, I think, just refreshed this information on the City of Barrie website. If you're interested in registering online, uh, please do that by April the 11th. Um, you can do that by emailing spring dot into clean at barry.ca or calling the city number 705-739-4285 and this is focused on one registering by the 11th but then a corporate cleanup school participation days and community cleanup days running across the city um, between the 19th and the 22nd for different programs um, love to see community groups out there it's usually well supported every year and there's been other great initiatives but um, I believe if you look on the City of Barrie website, you can also identify uh, if you've got students interested in this that they can actually um, receive community service hours for volunteering. So please check that out um, and uh, support some of our trash formation initiatives. And there's one. Are you want me to do that? Uh, we've got Councillor Nixon highlighted last week, but Battle of the Bands. If you're rocking out in Ward 2 on the pat before the patios are open, uh, you have uh, Battle of the Bands on April the 5th at the ranch, and that is occurring uh, 7 p.m. on the 5th. And the last announcement really is um, kind of an alert to all those bird lovers out there that we've got a dead heat tie between the barred owl and the belted kingfisher, and a poor little nuthatch is in third place. Big shame. So, who has yet, I'm asking for a hand, who has voted for their bird? Thank you. <laughs> that joke writes itself. <laughs> I know. So I'll ask all those in chambers and watching this evening to take a moment at um, buildingberry.ca. You have until March the 31st to help actually vote in your City of Berry bird. Some school classes have been participating in this. Uh, it's a wonderful initiative and... Um, this will all lead up to announcing the Barry Bird on May the 11th during the World Migratory Bird Day. And again, big thanks to City of Barry and, and the communications team in particular for being um, able to make this very accessible and helping to engage the public in this initiative. Uh, Councillor Harvey. Thank you, Mayor. And I'll, uh, I want to highlight uh, one of uh, my local restaurants, uh, Tika Fusion, at uh, 505 uh, Brine Drive. Uh, for the month of Ramadan up until uh, April the 9th, uh, they are going to be giving away uh, free meals. So it uh, offers um, customers that can afford to prepay for someone else's meal, and then Tika Fusion will actually match that meal. And then they've got the uh, free meal tickets hanging up in the window, so those that uh, are in the area that uh, can't afford to uh, purchase a meal at the time, they just grab one of the receipts off the window and, uh, and go in and receive a free meal. So it's uh, another uh, good feel community type event that uh, obviously the restaurant industry went through a, a tough time, but it's just going to show you that the restaurant community is still out there and really trying to uh, help the community, especially during these economic times and also too obviously during a, a special time of year for, uh, for the community. Wonderful, wonderful. Uh, any other announcements? Uh, there's a couple I'm just going to do off the cuff that I just uh, remember. First of all, uh, I think on behalf of the city to the Muslim community, we want to wish a happy Ramadan. Um, and at the same time, uh, there's also Holly. So if you're celebrating Holly, we want to wish you uh, great celebrations. And uh, we also have a growing Persian community here in the city of Barrie. And councillors um, Amory Kungal and, and Naomi Corser and myself were at uh, a gala on Saturday night uh, with the Barry Persian Association uh, celebrating Nowruz as well. And uh, I think it was about 225 or 250 people there, uh, which was really neat to see. So if you're celebrating Nowruz, we want to wish you all the best on behalf of the city of Barry as well. Uh, another item just off, off the cuff that happened yesterday, and I want to recognize um, Invest Barry Mishlichter, your team, your partners, uh, because I think there was a, a bunch of folks that uh, have been involved. Uh, so I'm going to do an announce an inquiry uh, where where I announce it, but you can fill in the dots on who else was involved in really uh, making this happen. But uh, yesterday in the provincial budget, uh, there was a million dollars uh, allocated to uh, create a regional uh, center for us, an innovation center. And in the budget, it actually specified that that regional center needs to be here in the city of Barrie. 
uh, that's a, a big win for the city of Barrie. It's another million dollars. Like, I, I haven't seen three weeks like this ever. It's wild. I, I, I can't wait to see what's next week. Uh, but that that is something that your team's been working on for a long time. And so if you could fill in on the announcement on what I should say in terms of how long we've been working on this, who the partners were uh, getting to the table, and uh, what it means to the community. Um, thank you very much, Mayor Nuttall. Uh, the Regional Innovation Centre concept, um, the province has supported uh, many around the province, um, and the closest ones for us for a very long time have been Markham uh, and Sudbury. And as this particular area, uh, Barry, broader area, have been growing, uh, we've really felt that gap and that support. And what innovation centers do is they really drive and accelerate growth in those high potential firms, uh, often in very specific areas. So bringing in the expertise, bringing in the uh, post-secondary support to really drive commercialization of projects and really getting new ideas to market. And so um, many of the players, uh, the city invested early in um, the sandbox. There have been others that have cropped up uh, in our surrounding region, uh, Innisfil, Collingwood, Aurelia. And so uh, what this does is this really drives the capacity to do more. Uh, we've been very fortunate to work with uh, Henry Burnick Entrepreneurship Center. Their connection with innovation space, I think, is a wonderful tie-in. Uh, and, of course, the support of um, uh, Minister Kanjin uh, and her office, who have been absolutely uh, open ears uh, in early discussions that also included the sandbox, but it really has been all the players in the ecosystem, uh, both locally and in our broader area, uh, that have rallied around this concept, uh, and we are very, very pleased to see it come to fruition. So thank you very much for the opportunity to recognize. Yeah, thanks, Stephanie. If you can make sure that um, all of those that were involved are uh, properly thanked and recognized. Uh, this is another example of partnership working. Like the province, the city, Georgian College, uh, the, the Burnick Centre, the Sandbox, uh, the County of Simcoe. Um, I think I'm missing somebody, but, but it, this, it, it's working. We're getting recognized and we're getting funding. And, uh, you know, in terms of the growth of our local economy, this was a, a huge announcement for us. Um, so we'll see what they give us next week. Uh, <laughs> so I proclaimed the week of April 1st to April 7th as the RCAF Centennial Week. And I believe that we have a flag raising uh, tomorrow morning uh, at 11 a.m., 10.30 a.m. And there's also before that at 10 a.m., I believe, uh, some celebrations and recognitions happening inside of the rotunda. A number of city services will be affected this weekend by Easter, including the Barrie Transit Services curbside collection, hours of operation, city facilities and community centers. So for more information on the affected city services and facility closures, please visit barrie.ca. To all those celebrating Easter, uh, we wish you a happy Easter as well and great time with family and friends. Due to the holiday, as uh, was said earlier, we won't be having a general committee meeting or council meeting next week on April 3rd, and we'll resume on the 10th of April. Deputy Mayor, I believe that you have uh, the bylaws. Moved by myself, second by Councillor Harvey. Leave be granted to introduce the following bills, and these bills be read a first, second, and third time, and finally pass. Bill 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. It's moved by Deputy Mayor Thompson, seconded by Councillor Harvey. The leave be granted to introduce the following bills, and these bills be ready first, second, and third time this day and finally pass. Bills 22 to 28. Any questions or comments with regards to the bills? Seeing none, all those in favor? It's carried. Deputy Mayor Thompson. Moved by myself, seconded by Councillor Harvey. That leave be granted to introduce the following bill, and this bill be read a first, second, and third time, and finally pass Bill 29. It's moved by Deputy Mayor Thompson, seconded by Councillor Harvey, the confirmation bylaw that leave be granted to introduce the following bill. This bill be ready first, second, and third time this day, and finally pass Bill 29. All are, any comments or questions? Seeing none, I just jumped to the end. All those in favor? <laughs> it carries. Do I have a motion to adjourn? 
Councillor Hamilton, Councillor Harris. All those in favour? 